Today on Freedom Journal Iraq, contractors train Iraqi citizens for reconstruction, and service members take part in the Marine Corps Marathon. Hello, I'm Senior Airman Anthony Kuhn. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Surge operations continue to weaken al-Qaeda in Iraq. One reason coalition forces have been so successful against AQI is because surge operations have been targeting the terror group's media network, making it difficult for AQI to spread its message and recruit extremists. This chart depicts the al-Qaeda in Iraq's media structure, as well as some of the leaders we've captured or killed since the surge began. We have uncovered eight separate AQI media offices and cells, captured or killed 24 al-Qaeda propaganda cell members, and discovered over 23 terabytes of information. We have learned a great deal from these detainees, information that has been corroborated by Khalid Mashadani, who prior to his capture in July, served as al-Qaeda in Iraq's senior emir for media operations. Both Abu Haider and Abu Sami indicate that AQI propaganda efforts have been degraded in recent months. Most telling was a statement by Salam Ali Mohammed Ahmed, who said, there is almost nothing left of AQI. Finally, we assess that, it, that our efforts have reduced AQI's ability to spread propaganda using their media cell network by as much as 80 percent. On September 29th, Admiral Gary Ruffhead replaced Admiral Mike Mullen as the Navy's 29th Chief of Naval Operations. Air Force Staff Sergeant Nicholas Kurtz has more on the Admiral's first visit to Iraq as the new CNO. During his visit through Iraq, Admiral Gary Ruffhead visited the International Zone in Baghdad. He sat down with a group of sailors and Marines to talk about the future of the U.S. Navy and the invaluable contribution of its sailors. I've only been out and about in uh, Iraq for the last two days. But everywhere I go, everywhere there are sailors, I'm inspired and I'm proud of what I'm seeing. And moreover, when I talk to the commanders, they cannot say enough about what the American sailor is doing and, and how they're making a difference. From their drive, to their skills, to their ability to come together quickly, their ability to focus on a mission, nothing is too hard. They get at it and they get it done and they're making all of us who wear this uniform extremely proud. Although he has only been in the position of CNO for just one month, Admiral Ruffhead says he felt it was a priority for him to visit his sailors at war. Air Force Sergeant Nicholas Kurtz, Baghdad. On tomorrow's FJI, we'll bring you the full story of the CNO's visit with CVs and hospital corpsmen at Fallujah. Iraq's infrastructure is bouncing back after 25 years of neglect under Saddam's rule. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Gulf Region Division is playing a big part in the rebuilding. Since 2004, they've renovated 16 Iraqi hospitals and over 1,000 schools. Those numbers may have been even higher if the construction sites weren't endangering American lives. That's where Iraqi citizens are stepping in to help. Air Force Staff Sergeant Christy Byers has the story. We can't show you their faces because their lives are at risk as well. They're Iraqi citizens working for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. This construction quality management class is teaching them how to go out to project sites where Americans would stand out and assess the progress virtually undetected. To be an American traveling within uh, Iraqi's neighborhood is quite dangerous. We are traveling uh, as uh, Iraqi individuals. You can pretend that you're visiting somebody in this site and so you can get to the site. But uh, after a while, it could be dangerous. I mean, traveling many times in, in these places, you could be suspected. Many of the students voluntarily taking this one-day course have college degrees. And although this is one certificate they won't be able to display next to that, they're still here. The Iraqis are serious about wanting to compete and contribute to the rebuild of their country. Building the capacity of the Iraqi people is one of the most important parts of Operation Iraqi Freedom. There's currently 516 ongoing projects in Iraq and more than 4,000 planned. Air Force Staff Sergeant Christy Byers, Baghdad. Coming up, service members take part in the Marine Corps Marathon. Here's your raid report. Near patrol base Assassin, U.S. soldiers captured four rockets thanks to a tip from local citizens. The citizens informed coalition forces they knew where rockets were and that they were aimed at the base. Coalition forces captured a wanted individual in Baghdad. The suspect is believed to have attempted to re-establish the city's car bombing operations. The car bombing network is involved in numerous attacks against Iraqi civilians and security forces. In Mosul, coalition forces captured a wanted individual believed to be a terrorist cell leader in the southern part of the city. The suspect is believed to have a long history of terrorist activity and is associated with several al-Qaeda and Iraq senior leaders. Coalition forces detained one suspected terrorist in an operation southwest of Kirkuk. 
The targeted individual allegedly makes frequent trips across northern Iraq and has knowledge of Al-Qaeda operations in the province. And that's your Raid Report. I'm Seaman Eric Jones. Hi, this is Walt Baby Love, right, ex-airborne paratrooper from the 82nd Airborne Division back in the day during the Vietnam era. Listen up, y'all. I know that y'all are over there doing a fantastic job. We'd like you to do some shout-outs for your loved ones back home. So we're offering you the opportunity to be on our syndicated radio programs called The Countdown and Gospel Tracks. Say what you like. We're going to put them on the air. You'll be heard all over the United States as well as around the world. So once again, this is Walt Baby Love inviting you to take the time and do a shout-out for your loved ones because you know they'd love to hear your voice. We're just trying to bring a little joy to you and to your families. Thank you for all that you do. God bless you. Call DSN 318-239-0950 or commercial at 703-270-0950 to leave your Walt Baby Love shout out. Be patient. It takes a few rings. Freedom Radio. Here are the latest headlines about Operation Iraqi Freedom. Al Arabia reports residents of Arab Jabur, a town south of Baghdad, celebrated the expulsion of Al Qaeda in Iraq from their area and the establishment of security for themselves. Citizens fought insurgents for a year without any support. Instead, they relied on their personal weapons and their stamina. The new U.S. commander for northern Iraq said he's hopeful for a diplomatic solution to the Turkish Kurdistan Workers' Party standoff. The Associated Press says Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki received a phone call Saturday from the Iranian president, and they both agreed on the necessity to confront the terrorist activities. General David Petraeus said al-Qaeda in Iraq's presence in Baghdad has been significantly weakened, but warned that Iraqis face new threats from criminals who have established an almost mafia-like presence in certain areas. Those are your headlines from around the region. I'm Air Force Sergeant Alana Ingram. Here's your OIF weather forecast. In Baghdad, look for sunny skies with highs in the mid-80s and lows in the 60s. To the north, Mosul can expect to see sunny skies with temperatures peaking at 85 and getting down to 60 at night. And in the south, you're set for sunny skies with highs around 95 and lows near 60. That's your OIF weather forecast. I'm Petty Officer Andrew Carlson. Welcome back. Iraqi and coalition doctors, as well as healthcare administrators, met to discuss efforts of the Coalition Iraqi Medical Network in Ambar province. This was the first physician's healthcare conference since the start of the war. Fifteen Iraqi medical professionals traveled to the meeting, including the director of medicine for Ambar province. Doctors discussed how to best manage patient flow and movement between hospitals. The Iraqi medical professionals acknowledged that improving and developing health services in Fallujah is one of the most pressing issues in Ambar. All healthcare officials in attendance hope the security improvements will parlay into an improved experience for sick and wounded Iraqis. The Marine Corps Marathon is the fourth largest marathon held in the U.S., and its popularity has filtered over to Iraq. Petty Officer Chad Bricks takes us to Fallujah, where the Marines and other services took part in this year's run. More than 30 runners gathered for this year's Marine Corps Marathon at Camp Fallujah. One experienced runner says the race taking place in Iraq adds a new challenge. Oh, it's a challenge. This is not a, uh, a place to run, this more logistic environment. So it's kind of hard to keep the training. So you have to go out there on your own and make an effort. Just put a little bit of effort to the best. The second place finisher, well, just kind of decided running 26.2 miles was one way to spend his Sunday. We got here uh, like in the beginning of October. We found out like a week later there's a marathon and a couple of us are just like, we might as well run it. Both competitors hope to one day run in the main Marine Corps Marathon in Washington, D.C. And although all services took part in the Camp Fallujah version, perhaps appropriately enough, Marines took first, second, and third. Petty Officer Chad Bricks, Camp Fallujah, Iraq. Next time on Freedom Journal Iraq, coalition forces work to stabilize injured civilians. That does it for this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Check out mnf-iraq.com for all the latest OIF information. From all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.